What is up everyone? Welcome back to another video here today and welcome to massive unboxing number nine. It's our annual Christmas unboxing and it has returned once again and we have slightly more models than last year. We have a total of 17 new models to unbox and some bonus stuff as well which you can kind of see right over here and this big box. So yeah, gonna be quite fun to unbox this. I got two Aero Classics, three Panda models, three NG models, and the rest are all Gemini Jets. It'd be approximately nine. So it takes up about half of our unboxing here in this video. And yes, of course, the calendar makes its return as well. So I guess without further ado, we're just gonna jump straight into this unboxing because it's likely gonna take me a couple of hours or so to film this all. So let's find a seam here. Let's break it. We are now in, into the calendar, make our way around, there we go. I don't like to show the calendar when it's facing that, just because the plastic gives off a reflection that I don't like, so yeah. There's the calendar, um, updated as well as the month of July does include Freedom 1, so that'll be cool. So I'll just use this as like a little platform like I did last year. Actually no, it does have a piece of cardboard, so I'll just use this as a platform to place the models on as I go with the video. So that I'll just put off to the side. And without further ado, we're gonna go ahead and begin with all the models. So this will be the biggest unboxing I've ever done here on the channel. So let's go ahead and get started over here. And our first model that we are unboxing is the Aero Classics Northwest Airbus A319. So I'm gonna go ahead and go in order of brands from the least amount of models I have for this unboxing to the largest amount, which is obviously Gemini Jets and their military production line, Gemini Max, which I only have one of them here. So yeah, this is a model that was released in, I believe, Aero Classics November releases, this Northwest A319, and I've really wanted one of these for a while, so when they did announce this, I figured I had to get it at some point. So there's the back of the box with the Airbus family, A320 family, A319, A320 on this side, um, adult collectible warning, A321, and then there's a the registration, 319 or November Bravo. Wonder why they chose the registration for this one on this A319. Seems very interesting, but I think we all know. So let's go ahead and hop in. We get our first taste of massive unboxing number nine here. Here we go, first model out, and it is good, yes. And yes, as you might know, I'm in a different setup once again for this Christmas unboxing. I'm actually at my Oklahoma City Airport table. Figuring that I wasn't going to do an Oklahoma City Airport update December, I figured I would be on the Oklahoma City Airport update table to do massive unboxing number nine. So, figured I'd make up in that respect. So here's the Northwest Airbus A319 by Aero Classics, a wonderful little model here. The colors look pretty good. Um, lighting's not gonna be exactly the best, but I think it'll be better out here in the Oklahoma City Airport area than it is in my room where I did last year's unboxing. Start up at the front, we have the cockpit windows, the Sky Team logo, a fleet number 3119er, and then we have the L1 door, the big Northwest titles, uh, Northwest Airlines, the registration along with the American flag underneath the windows, and then we have the northwest tail up there with obviously an arrow that's pointing in the northwest direction. Flip over to models, so standard stuff under here, no Aero Classics logos or anything. They obviously don't believe in that. As I suppose I should check the wings here and everything since I do see a lot of people uh, checking for that nowadays and everything on this model looks to be properly glued and nothing is missing. No aerials, so you don't have to really worry about that stuff. I'm not, not sure why they don't even do that. Obviously, they don't believe in aerials or these um, other details that just look a little unnecessary to them. So, whatever, they're lost. So, first model looks pretty good. We'll move on to the second model. And our second model that we will be unboxing will be the UPS Airbus A300. Now, this is the model that I ordered along with Aero Classic September releases with the FedEx A300 that I've had for a couple of months up to this point. Um, it's a really nice model and I do like it, so I'm excited to see the UPS A300. So, take a look at the box. Basically, the same as the FedEx A300 box. Uh, Aero Classics logo here on the left and um, some warnings here on the back along with the registration of ever 173 uniform Papa. Adult collectible warning, and then a nice little sticker up here with the um, livery, if you will. Just kind of designed in a unique way to fit the sticker. So worldwide services titles, 
the brown and the registration and then also the little advertisement for aeroclassicsdirect.com. And then Asia Pacific, not sure why this is on A300 boxes. And then you can see here, there is a map of the um, Asia continent, uh, mostly of China and also parts of Indonesia down there. All that fun stuff. So yeah, without further ado, hop in. So hopefully we continue the streak of no broken models. I've never gotten a broken model from Aero Classics and I think it helps with the fact that there's no antennas or anything. Reduces the risk of missing pieces. So take off all the plastic here in the foam and we are good here on the UPS. All right, and here is the UPS Airbus A300 by Aero Classics. Wonderful model upon first impressions. Let's take a closer look. Got the cockpit windows over here, the L1 door and the cargo door up here along with the big worldwide services titles that they updated within the last five years. The nice transition from white to brown over here on the back and then the UPS logo on the tail along with the registration, which again is November 173, Uniform Papa. Underneath, pretty plain, uh, nothing too crazy down here, which is pretty much the norm here for Aero Classics, but you do have some extra details for the nose landing gear doors. Um, nothing for the main gear, which is kind of strange. We do have a stand hole underneath. It is a cradle mold, as you can probably tell by that seam there, so it doesn't look that great on a white um, plane. But apart from that, the model is good. Nothing broken, as far as I can tell. So again, just checking the pieces that I can. The wing, the cradle wings, I will not really worry about too much because those are pretty much secured in there like 100% of the time, uh, except on those few rare occasions where they can come off, but that's very rare. All right, so that's all the Aero Classics models. We'll now move on over to our Panda model stash, which is right here. We got two in Southwest and one United. Starting out for the Panda models, we have this United Boeing 737-700. A wonderful, wonderful model from the pictures I've seen. This actually hasn't sold that well compared to the NG release, which I guess is kind of understandable because everybody prefers the NG 700 mold, but I like Panda's mold because the bottom split scimitar is a little more accurate. It's a bit shorter than the top one, which is how it's supposed to be, um, but the Panda mold does kind of have its own little downsides, like being a little too thick on the fuselage and all that fun stuff. So. On the front, we have the Boeing logo, 1400 CL. It's basically going to be the same on all the Panda boxes, so I won't go into too much detail. But the only difference that you'll have is this little sticker down here, which just indicates the aircraft type, the scale, the airline, the registration, and of course, a image of the aircraft. Boeing 1400 scale on this side, and also on this side, you have a sticker as well, along with the standard Boeing logo, which is also present on the bottom. Now on the back, you got a nice 737 head-on shot on the ramp. So not sure what livery this is, but it does look pretty cool. Probably something that was a photo edited or something like that. I'm not sure. But yeah, nice box. Pretty small, smaller than NG 737 boxes as I've demonstrated before. And if I can get my thumb under here, there we go. We will begin the unboxing. I don't think I've seen anybody even review this yet, so everybody's been doing the MG, but I will be doing the Panda release because you know, that's what I do. This was announced in a set of a couple of other models as well. A Southwest release was also announced, which I also do have, and then there was also some Copa Airlines stuff that it was also announced as well, and here we are. Ooh, yes. All right, so first I'm gonna go ahead and inspect the model here for any potential QC issues. So left wing looks good. Right wing looks good. Horizontal stabilizers look good. I don't know why I'm saying it like that, but just go with it here. Uh, yeah, so apart from that, everything else looks good on this model. Everything is attached, nothing missing. All antennas are there, including the Wi-Fi dome. So we'll get started on the review of the Panda model, South or, uh, United 737-700 with the Evil Blue livery and with split scimitars. So, uh, oops there, bumped into the model. Starting up at the front, we have the Connecting People Uniting the World titles underneath. Obviously, the cockpit windows up front, the Star Alliance logo. The L1 door, I gotta get like a pencil or something so I can point to what I'm trying to show you. And then the big United Evo Blue titles. And then a registration as well, November 17759er, which I believe is not the first 737-700 to receive the Evo Blue livery. I may be wrong on that. And then, of course, the Evo Blue tail right over there. And then the underneath uh, various details include several antennae underneath and then a stand hole as well for if you want to put it on a stand. Uh, looks like it's a blank stand hole. There's no like 
extra area underneath that would result in a Gemini Jet Stanhole not working with this model. Looks to be some extra rubber of some kind here on the nose wheels, if I can zoom in on that. You can kind of see it there. It's actually not as noticeable as I thought it would be, so. But apart from that, everything else looks good. The model, everything, uh, nothing is broken. So yeah, that's our first panel model in the books. Looks all good. Move on to the next one. Next up, we have the Southwest 737-700 with the heart livery and blended winglets. So this is the one that was announced along with the United Eva Blue and the Copa aircraft as well. There were, I think, two of them that were announced, the regular livery and also a uh, Connect Miles livery. So box is basically the same as on the United and it will be the same for the next one that I will do. You can kind of see it over there. It's a Lone Star 1, so I'll just make a mention of that before I get any further into this unboxing, so. Pop in. Yes. So it should be the same as the RM Model Store exclusive that was previously released in 2021. It was announced in like late 2020 and that didn't get to come in until later. But yeah, this one looks all good. Do a quick inspection here, make sure nothing is broken. I don't want to pull too hard. And yeah, we're all good. So starting off at the front, we have the cockpit windows. I have a pencil finally. You've got the L1 door, a little uh, Southwest heart there next to the L1 door. The big Southwest titles up here. And then we have a Wi-Fi dome up here, several antennae up here. Registration right there, November 9 or 50, Whiskey November, which is kind of blocked out by the glare there from the lights. If I get the pencil shadow there to kind of block that, you can see it a little bit better, but. And then we have the Southwest tail, of course, and then Southwest.com on the engine. So let me flip over the model here. Underneath, uh, pretty standard stuff for Southwest. Got a little heart right there, and then a stand hole along with the landing gear, which looks like may have been properly or improperly assembled. So, as it looks like it's not sitting even. Yeah, so this one looks to be a bit forward by like a couple of millimeters or so. Uh, not sure if it's just it wasn't placed in there at the right angle or if it was something else. I think it's not placed at the right angle because you can kind of see it angles this way a little bit more than this one does. It's, I think it's supposed to be back like that. So I think this one is correct, whereas this one is not. So, um, but again, it doesn't affect how the model stands and you won't really see it anyway as it's sitting on a shelf or on an airport display. So I'm not gonna complain too much here. As long as I'm broken, I'm not gonna have too much of a hissy fit. Um, I did hear one of my models was rattling a little bit, so I may end up having a broken model this year. I'll we'll have to see what happens, so stay tuned for that. We'll move on to the last Panda model. All right, and our last Panda model that we have here is the Southwest 737-700 wearing the Lone Star 1 livery. This was actually something that Gemini Jets announced for their August releases on August 12th, but then literally the next day, Panda models and waffle collectibles come together and make Lone Star 1 themselves. So I'm just like, you know what? I'm getting the Panda exclusive. Unfortunately, I couldn't do that with California 1. More on that in a minute. But again, the box is the same as the previous two, so I won't go into detail too much about that. If you want to see what it looks like, check out the Panda Models United 737-700 review that I did just a few minutes ago. And I forgot to mention at the beginning of the video, I will have chapters for each and every single model and NASCAR diecast I will unbox. Yes, I do have NASCAR diecast in this unboxing. So if you want to see select parts of the video, you can do that at your convenience. So again, check Lone Star 1 here for any sort of damage or detached pieces because of lack of glue. And it looks like we are all good on this one too. So five for five, can we keep the streak alive? Yes, this looks so good. So first of two state liveries. And I also should mention that I was supposed to get Maryland 1 for this unboxing. Unfortunately, it did not make it. So I would have had 18 models. I was originally scheduled to get 15, but there's a couple extra models that arrived in later. So I will showcase those models uh, towards the end of the unboxing. So with that out of the way, let's go ahead and do the review for the Southwest 737-700 with the Lone Star 1 livery. So at the front, we got the cockpit windows, the Lone Star 1 titles underneath. Got the L1 door, the big star. Um, for the Texas flag. This is basically the flag of the state of Texas just enlarged across the entire fuselage Got some red over here And then we have the Southwest heart tail Which is what they usually do on the state liveries and other special liveries they have including triple crown one And then we have the uh, red and blue engines underneath and it will be the same on the other side. So let's flip over So there's the underneath of the aircraft if anybody's ever seen the underneath of Lone Star one 
here you go. So that's what it looks like. It looks really nice. Uh, yeah, so just kind of stretching the top of the tip of the star there across the bottom of the fuselage like anyone will see it. You can't even see it anyway, really. Um, yeah, so again, same as before, just with the various antennae and the Wi-Fi dome, of course, up there. Painted to match the livery based on where it's at on the aircraft. So as you saw on the uh, Southwest Heart uh, blended winglet, it is blue, whereas on this one it is white, just to match with the livery. So yeah, again, really nice model. I like it. I've always wanted to have Lone Star one in my collection. Um, Jim and I did it back when it was on the 737-300 uh, quite a few years ago at this point, but now that it's been on the 700 for several years and uh, both Gemini and I and Panda finally did one, I was so happy to see uh, Panda release this. It looks like I'm running on two bars on my camera here, so I may have to switch out batteries here pretty soon, I think, but we'll try to see how long this will last, so. And here we go for the unboxing of the NG Models American 737-800 Astrojet. So we have now moved on to the NG Models and away from the Panda Models. So again, the NG box are going to be a lot more detailed, so I will have to do some box art review on here. So at the top, we got Boeing 737-800, got the American Airlines um, logo there in the back, along with an image of the aircraft. I should grab my pencil for this. Got the American Airlines logo down here. Uh, this is just kind of like the main part of the logo. We got the titles there. Astrojet titles, a nice little red stripe underneath, which is shown on the livery up here. NG logo, uh, 1400 scale collectible models, die cast metal underneath. Flip it on this side, we got 737-800 NG, American Airlines, and then 1400 scale collectible models, die cast metal. Bottom, 737-800, the NG logo, image of the plane, and the registration, along with the barcode for the item number, which is 58106. And then left will be the same as the right, and then top the same as the bottom, and here's the back of the box, which is the same as the front, but has some information and their socials. So, that out of the way, let's go ahead and hop in. Here we go three for three on NG models. NG has unfortunately had some QC issues that has started to become a lot more common, which is unfortunate, so I'm hoping that mine is not broken. I've already got one broken NG. Let's not make it multiple, so. All right, that wing's good. That wing's good. Um, oh, that's loose. Oh yeah, that is loose. I felt it. I felt it judder a bit, but I'm gonna leave that in there this time. I don't want to damage it. And yeah, this is gonna be a fingerprint magnet. I can already tell. And here we are with the American Airlines 737-800 with the Astrojet Retro Livery by NG Models. This is beautiful. I was glad I picked up the NG because when Gemini announced this in the August releases, I did have a feeling that NG was going to release this very soon. In the next month, of course, look at what NG did. So they released this. So start up at the front, you got that black anti-glare nose for, um, for sun glare and all that stuff, which should be across this entire model because you can already see it. I uh, got the cockpit windows, the Astrojet titles, there's the L1 door, and there's that big red stripe which was present on the original um, Astrojet livery back in like the 60s. This is before the American Chrome livery that we all know and love today. And then we got the big American Airlines titles which stretches across the entire fuselage. American flag and the registration down there, and then you have the Astrojet titles up on the tail, the American Airlines logo at the time, and then the big Wi-Fi dome and some various antenna, so obviously Wi-Fi didn't really exist back in the 60s and 50s, so and there's that for you. And then here's the underneath of the model, um, all gray, all that fun stuff. I'm um, actually able to get this polished, I think, so yeah, that's kind of nice. wonder why they can't do it on the TriStars, because people have been having issues with NG not being able to polish that on the TriStars. So that's it for that model, we'll move on to the next. Next up, we have the NG model Southwest 737-800 with the Freedom One livery. This is a model I've been really excited to get in the collection. Gemini Jets just announced this for their December 2021, January 2022 releases. So if you want the Gemini version, there is that for you. So we'll start off at the front of the box. We got the 737-800 up here. We got an image of the plane and the American flag um, printed across the entire box. Got the NG logo down here, one 400 scale collectible me models, die cast metal. The Southwest logo, 50 years, one heart, and the registration, which is 500 Whiskey Romeo. I have a feeling that's why they chose this plane, because it had 50 in it. On this side, we have the 737-800 titles up here. Got the NG logo, the Southwest 50 years, one heart logo, and then one 400 scale collectible models, die cast metal. Top of the box, we have 737-800 NG. Got the image of the plane and the registration. And then left, same as the right, and then bottom, same as the top. So here's the back again. 
Same thing as the front, again, with their socials, and their item number on this one is 58110. Ooh, ooh. ooh, yeah, that is awesome. Let's hope to God that this is not broken, which I'm hoping it's not. Again, that's why I'm doing these inspections after taking out the model of the box. Okay. All right. Looks like we're good on here and nothing missing underneath. So, good job, NG. And here it is, the Southwest 737-800 with the Freedom One livery. I'm so, I've been so excited to get this. You can already tell in my voice, so. Start off at the front, we have the cockpit windows. We got the Freedom One titles, and then we have the um, stars there, the stars and bars are all across the plane. It's just essentially the American flag applied across the entire aircraft. But I think for whatever reason, they actually can't do that. I think they have to make some sort of modifications in order for it to be, you know, legally allowed, if you will. And then we move on to the bars over here, the red and white, and then we obviously have the Wi-Fi dome painted in red to match the top of the aircraft. Southwest R10, which is also present on the Lone Star One, and then we also have the registration right there, November 500 Whiskey Romeo, in case you have not memorized that yet. But I think a lot of us plane spotters and aviation enthusiasts alike have memorized all the Southwest Special Livery registrations. So here's the underneath, again, we got the stars right there, you got the Southwest Heart logo, and then the landing gear, which looks okay on this one. And then we have obviously the stars and bars, or the bars rather, uh, just the bars only here on the back. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it for this one. But yeah, I've been excited to get this for quite a while, so I'm happy to finally have this in the collection. So if I'm able to find an airport that has Freedom One present at it whenever I do an airport update, that will definitely be done. Now let's move on to the final NG model for this unboxing before we move on to the big group. And our final NG model we have is a Delta Airbus A330-300. Yes, so this will be the last piece to complete in terms of the Delta mainline fleet, apart from the 767-400, which I have yet to find a model of. Um, I know Herpa has done one, and I think Dragon Wings also has done one as well, but they're super rare, and they come up uh, really high prices on eBay whenever they do show up, so... This box is pretty massive, about the same size as my National A330 box, which would make sense. Um, got the big Airbus A330 300 titles up here, image of the plane, the Delta logo, registration, NG model logo, and the 1-400 scale collectible models, die-cast metal. Move to the bottom of the box, we have Airbus A330 300 NG, image of the plane, registration, A330 300 NG logo, Delta logo, 1-400 scale collectible models, die-cast metal. And then obviously the other sides will be the same. So back of the box, same as the front, just minus some details and some extra information for NG socials. Item number 62021 on this one. So yeah, so it looks like we do have styrofoam on this one too and hope to God that this is not broken because even their A330s have been subject to possible QC issues. And some of these models that again have been sitting in storage for several months. So who knows if any of them have even come broken. Move this by the tail this time, so thankfully I got a little more comfortable doing that, but yeah. Ooh, there's a little sun right there on the wing. You see that? Yeah, not sure that's supposed to be there. It looks like some, something got spilled over, like a liquid of some kind. Uh, is that present on the other wing, maybe? I don't think so, but that's just what I noticed as I removed this, so. Yeah, so I got the model out, and now let's do a QC inspection here. Making sure everything is all glued in nice and tight, and it looks like it is. So, good job again, NG, but I'm a little concerned about that little thing there on the wing. And here it is, the Delta Airbus A330-300 by NG Models. So, again, I'm concerned about this little spillage of some type of liquid. It almost looks like something got spilled on it, so perhaps glue or some other kind of liquid. Maybe the factory worker was drinking a beverage or something, unless they don't allow that, which I don't think they would, especially around such delicate things like an airplane model. We'll start off at the front, we got the cockpit window right there, a little Sky Team logo, got the L1 door, the Delta titles across the front of the plane, which on the Neos is a lot bigger, so I don't know if Delta will go through a phase where they will enlarge the Delta titles on all of their planes, because it is kind of small to begin with. This livery was introduced back in 07, so um, nowadays it's kind of outdated, kind of, but not really. And then we have the American flag back there, the registration, let me do a quick adjust the camera there, there we go. Uh, American flag, registration, November 806, November whiskey. 
I also have a fleet number up there at the top of the tail and then the Delta logo. So let's flip over the plane. Do we get a Delta belly? Yes, we do. We got a Delta belly on this one. So pretty much all of my planes, apart from the regional jets and some older Delta aircraft now have Delta belly in their, um, well, belly. <laughs> So yeah, um, everything else looks good. Uh, nothing detached, nothing missing as far as I can tell. But again, um, oh yeah, it is present on the other wing too. I just saw it right there. You can kind of see it. Yeah, I'm not sure. Maybe that could be a detail on the aircraft because it almost looks consistent around that gray area, but I don't know. I'm not entirely sure what it is. So if any, any one of you guys knows what it is, please let me know in the comments. Looks like I did forget a little detail right there next to the L1 door, if I can zoom in on that. Looks like something for their onboard Wi-Fi, maybe, if I had to guess. Um, ooh, that engine felt loose there. Actually, I'm not sure if I'm supposed to tug on that, so my bad. <laughs> I'd have just broken that on accident. Yeah, they do kind of feel kind of wobbly, so. Yeah, not really supposed to tag on that anyway, so I won't really bother with that too much, but yeah. That's all the NG models. Let's move on to the big boy Gemini Jets. Got all kinds of goodies with this one here, so let's go ahead and get started. Since we have nine models in total, we have three of each size box that Gemini Jets currently uses with their models. So we have three of the regional aircraft boxes slash their small aircraft because we do have this one right here. So yeah, uh, we're going to go ahead and get started with possibly the, uh, I don't know which one to start with. I'll actually start with this one here. Start off with the Eastern Lockheed L-188 Electra. So flip it open. There is the model inside. This is so cool. I've actually wanted a retro Electra for a while, so this is a good opportunity to get one. On the back, 2021 release. This is in the August releases along with the FedEx ATR, which I have right here. I will do that up next. And item number on this one, GJEAL373. So this makes me think that this was planned out years and years ago and they did not get a chance to release this until now. Ooh, this is interesting. <laughs> it's kind of like translucent plastic. Um, doesn't look as blue um, to my eyes as it does on camera. Just kind of doing a quick comparison here between the naked eye and of course the camera. It's not as blue as it as the camera makes it look like, so that's kind of interesting. This is packed tight. All right, and... Ooh, ooh. Man, that is shiny, kind of. Oh, prop spin. And here it is, the Eastern Lockheed L-188 Electra by Gemini Jets. My first Lockheed Electra and my second Eastern aircraft with the hockey stick livery. So I think a few did survive to this hockey stick livery before being um, scrapped or retired from the Eastern Airlines fleet. So start off at the front, we got the cockpit windows. Looks like a little eyebrow window up there perhaps, or is that like a paint defect or something on it? I can't tell for sure. That might just be like a, an addition to the window there, like a top window, kind of like an eyebrow window you see on some of the 717s and older 737 aircraft. Got a neat little detail down here of some kind. Let me do a quick uh, close eye check of what it is, but it is a really neat little detail. So if anybody knows exactly what it is, let me know, but I will zoom in on it if you do want a reference to what it looks like. So there it is down there. And then we have a few windows up ahead of what I would presume to be the L1 door. And then we have the Eastern titles, a little American flag above the overwing exit. Then we have a rear boarding door and then the registration November 5517. And then, of course, the hockey stick livery with the cheat line extending upwards into the tail. And then we have the props. Of course, they do all spin, as I will demonstrate here. And then the landing gear, I believe the wheels do not roll on this. Um, yeah, they feel pretty sturdy, like spigot wheels, but they do feel a little rubbery, um, if you can kind of tell. Yeah, I'm not entirely sure if they are rubber, or just perhaps plastic wheels. So. There is a stand hole underneath and the Gemini Jets logo. I should probably zoom out a little bit. You kind of get a better idea of the underneath of the Electra here in this case, if you've never seen one. I've never seen one either, so I really do hope to see one. I think the closest we have are those um, WP3 Orions or something like that that uh, NOAA uses for um, hurricane uh, weather forecasting and all that fun stuff. They also use C-130s, but I've seen those fly around a couple of times, but I've never ever, ever been able to see one up close. So. Hopefully that is in my not too distant future. So that out of the way, we'll move on to the next model. Next up, we have the FedEx Express ATR 72-600 freighter. This is an Irish registered aircraft, as I said in the August release video, um, but I still needed a FedEx ATR 72, so this is a good opportunity to get one. 
Here's the inside of the box with the model inside, and then there's the aircraft pamphlet, all the information. Uh, you know the drill with Gemini jets at this point, basically the same stuff. Except on this case it is white because um, FedEx and all that fun stuff, so FedEx service marks used by permission. 2021 release as expected. Item number on this one, GJFDX1986. And again, looks slightly translucent down here. And then once again, um, very, very blue here on this box, when I, especially when I turn it over. When I turn it over like this, it's a little bit more accurate to what I see on camera. And here we are. Whew. Dang, this is tiny. Tiny little sucker. And here it is, the FedEx ATR 72-600 Freighter by Gemini Jets, an Irish registered one. Now, I'm not entirely sure who exactly operates this, just under like a contract of FedEx feeder, because um, I think a lot of the FedEx feeder aircraft are operated under like a different airline, perhaps like Iron Mountain Air from what I've seen or something like that, or no, like CSA Air rather, and something else along like that. So, um, CSA is what we usually get for like the Cessna 208 caravans here in Sioux Falls. We'll start off at the front. We got the cockpit windows right there. A little detail of some kind that I can't entirely make out what it is. The World on Time titles underneath. And then we have the FedEx feeder titles right in front of the cargo loading door. And then there's also, looks to be like another door back there for some smaller stuff. Registration, Echo India Dash Gulf Uniform Lima. And then we have the FedEx titles up there. Now since this is the ATR 72600, I believe it does have some different props compared to uh, older ATR 72 models, but they do spin. This one seems a little loose in this one, but this one does spin freely. Both of them do. And then we have the underneath um, standard Gemini Jet stuff. No stand hole present on this one because this is kind of a tiny model to begin with. But a new detail that we do have on this one is that we do have an antenna back here. So kind of interesting that they would add an antenna on, especially such a small model. So if they can do it on an ATR, why can they not do it on a CRJ, for God's sake? I don't know why they can't do that. They do have a Delta CRJ 200 announced as a future release, so I can at least complete the entire Delta fleet, apart from the 764. Um, I did exclude the CRJ initially because I was only referencing Delta mainline aircraft and their wide body fleet. So that out of the way, let's move on to the last regional jet box. And that one is the American Eagle Embraer ERJ-145. Yes, I'm so glad Gemini Jets did this. And they came in clutch as well as it only took them about two and a half to three weeks to get these models in stock at their warehouse and eventually sent out to other retailers. Um, I did order the this from Panda Fox along with a couple of other models from that set um, because I figured they were going to get them the quickest since they are in Las Vegas and do have some direct connections with Gemini Jets, so that's why I ordered from them. But there's the aircraft pamphlet, aircraft inside, all that fun stuff. On the back, 2021 release as expected and officially licensed American Airlines product as expected, but nothing too special on the box. Item number GJAAL2035. A little bit high up there for this, so let me move back down a little bit. And again, slightly translucent, so it's not doing anything, otherwise I've not really paid attention that much. And ooh, ooh yes. Oh yeah, this feels so good to have finally. So glad I don't have to go pay a hundred bucks on eBay for a uh, 9 or 28 Alpha Echo. Yes, feels so good to have this. So this is another another model checked off the regional jet wish list. I will definitely have to get the ERJ-175 that was just announced for the December-January set. So. That will definitely be coming very soon. So starting off at the front, we have the cockpit windows operated by Piedmont Airlines underneath. American Eagle titles underneath the windows. There's the L1 door as expected. Registration right there, November 603, Kilo Charlie. And then we have the American Eagle tail, which looks to sit a little bit lower than how it's supposed to be on the real thing. But again, it's only about like a few millimeters, so I'm not gonna complain too much. Uh, landing gear, it's basically just a little stud. Um, can't put much detail, especially on such a tiny model. So I think we can forgive Gemini for that. There's the underneath with the wheels. Um, looks to be a little bit poorly assembled, but they do get the um, L-shaped uh, main landing gear right on this, which is a neat little detail for the ERJ um, family of aircraft. So that's kind of nice that they got that right at least, but looks like the wheels were a little bit poorly assembled, especially on this one. Looks like this one is about to fall off for God's sake. Let's see if I can push that back in there maybe. Yeah, I don't know if that's gonna go back in there. So I guess just don't roll this around and yeah, it won't fall off. So yeah, apart from that, the model looks really good. And I'll zoom out a bit so you can see everything underneath. 
So it will be really nice to have this finally, and I will have this in the next airport update, which will be Des Moines before January 2022. So it'll be in just about a couple of weeks. We did have five Fridays this month, by the way, so there wouldn't have been an airport update anyway on such a month like this where there are five Fridays. So that's all the regional aircraft boxes. Let's go ahead and move on to the three of the main normal size boxes. Those being the Boeing B-52 Strato Fortress, a first for Gemini Jets, their first B-52 release in 1400 scale, a Barksdale Air Force Base example there, sorry about that. And we do have an interesting model here as we have an Air Ceylon Hawker Siddeley HS-121 Trident 1E. This is a model I did not order. I actually requested for a few surprise models, so this is one of them that I ended up getting. I did get two more as well, which you will see here towards the end. And of course, we have Southwest California 1 from the same set as the American Eagle Ember 145 and the B-52. So I think we'll go ahead and get started with the Air Ceylon Hawker Siddeley Trident 1E. So yeah, this I've seen on Waffle Collectibles website many, many times and kind of memed on it as well with a few friends as well. So yeah, so there's the underneath of the of the flap with the aircraft info. And I got a little price sticker down there. 29 bucks. This is apparently originally bought for. On the back, it is a 2008 release, so nothing too special here. And then we have a database number there, 179991. And then the item number on this one, GJACE773. So perhaps I can use this for some meme-related content, or if anybody wants good pictures of this. Oh my god. Okay, yeah, this is like stuck in there. Oh, there's like a flap of some kind on there. The top flap up there, this was preventing me from, from removing the plastic cradle from the box, so that's wonderful. I am starting to get crowded with boxes over here since I've started to move them from behind the unboxing area to now right next to me over to my left. If I can get this off, there we go. Plastic sticks to the top there, and let's remove this. And we do get some film underneath there to protect the landing gear. So let's take that off, put that back in the box, and there we go. <laughs> Such the most random model I can get in my collection, but yet I'm so happy by it. I'm just happy with, that, with whatever model I get at this point. So might as well send me a Malaysia Singapore 707 if you want. And here it is, the Air Ceylon Hawker Siddeley HS-121 Trident 1E by Gemini Jets. A very random model for the collection. Am I gonna use this in any airport updates? Probably not. But will it look good on my shelf? Absolutely. So start off at the front, we have the cockpit windows. We've got a little L1 door there, which has a unique shape on it. it looks like some curves there. It looks a little bit slimmer than most doors. Uh, a little flag of some kind. Again, I don't know much about Air Ceylon, so I'm not gonna have no idea what half the stuff is on this, on this model. Uh, looks like that's a Hawker Siddeley logo right there next to the L1 door there on the left side, um, aft or ahead of the um, L1 door. So there's that flag there that I was talking about. So you can kind of see it right there. And then we have the Air Ceylon titles right by it. Or is it Air, Air Ceylon? Air Ceylon? I'm just gonna call it Air Ceylon because I don't know much about this airline and I don't know how to pronounce it correctly. So I just kind of have to deal with that. Registration right there, that is, uh, I'm gonna just zoom in on this again. Uh, that's for Romeo Dash Alpha Charlie November. So there's that for you. And then we also have the, uh, what I would assume to be the Air Ceylon logo there on the tail. Flip it underneath. Uh, looks like I got the Gemini Jets logo and of course the landing gear as expected. Registration there on that left wing over there. All that fun stuff. So yeah, it looks like my camera is running on one bar of battery. I'm not sure we're gonna be able to continue but I'll try to stick around for as long as possible because unfortunately I did not plan ahead. I did not charge the other camera battery but we'll make do with it. We'll try to uh, keep going as quickly as possible so I don't lose out on any footage. Moving back to something that's well within my interest range, we have the Southwest 737-700 with the California 1 livery. So this is your standard Southwest box uh, for Gemini jets, so nothing too interesting on here. No flap, all white, all that fun stuff. So here's the back, uh, 2021 release as expected, and item number on this one is GJSWA2020-2020. So. Yeah, I would have gotten the Waffle Collectibles release from the spring, but I did not have time to get it, so I have missed out. So when Gemini announced this, I was happy to see this be released. And yeah, looks like we are good on this one as well. No damage or anything. 
And here it is, a Southwest 737-700 in the California One livery by Gemini Jets. So, again, this is decent. This is still okay, um, especially if it isn't the Panda Mold, but I'll definitely take this because I do want all the state liveries. It's kind of my goal here, so that's why I have Maryland One coming as well. And I will have to get Arizona One a little bit later. I do know another guy who actually has it. I might buy it off of him later. So we got the cockpit windows, got the California One titles, the little Southwest heart right there, and then the uh, star there on the flag of California, and the big bear as well going across the um, middle of the fuselage. Registration right there, November 9 or 4, 3, Whiskey November. Got the Southwest tail, little American flag right there as well, which I don't think was present on the, actually it was on the other um, models as well, so I kind of missed out on that detail. Uh, I got a little rear boarding door right there, and then the uh, front leg of the bear kind of extends onto that engine, and then also there on the back as well. And if I flip it over on the other side, it will be the same as well. So there's that, and then there's also the various details and antenna, which unfortunately Gemini misses out here underneath. They put like no antenna or anything underneath, whereas Panda does a pretty good job with this. So again, there's the nose that everybody makes fun of, and then the wings, which obviously actually aren't as bad as I thought they would be. Now, if I was able to lower the uh, camera a little bit, you would be able to see it better, but wing flex actually isn't too bad on this. Um, it's definitely not, you know, crazy bad, but it's not very noticeable, so. Yeah, move on to the B-52. All right, this one I do have some concerns about because I did hear some rattling on here. And as you can see, yeah, there is something missing. So you see here on the left wing, there's supposed to be this thing there, what I would assume to be like a, I don't know, like a weapon of some kind, a missile maybe. Um, this one does not have it. So that does make me a little concerned. But there's the front of the box, B-52H, US Air Force. Um, yeah, same Gemini Max stuff as usual, so nothing too crazy on here. Item number on this one is GM USA 112. This is broken, but I definitely do guarantee that it is broken. I've had some concerns about the B-52, especially since this is a new mold for Gemini, and I don't think they've ever even done one, period. Open. Oh my god, I think they're neat. Alright, what do you have for us? Okay. Okay, yeah, so we are missing something. It looks like we are missing a wheel as well. Now, if I can focus on that here. Yeah, we are missing a wheel, whereas this one... Actually, no, is, is it supposed to come with one wheel only? It might, 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 might just be that we it only comes with one wheel on... Just kind of facing inward on the aircraft, so that might be... That might not be a defect, that might just be, you know, how it's supposed to be, but yeah. B-52, and we got the piece in here, so there is the piece that fell off, so... This, I would assume, just kind of slides in like that with some glue, so... I will fix that later, but for now, I will do the review. Man, this is so cool to see a B-52, so... Really wanted a B-52 for so long. I'm so glad Gemini did one. Even if it was a Barksdale one, I would have preferred a Minon one, but it doesn't really bother me too much, so... Get you adjusted here, and then we'll start off at the front. We got the cockpit windows. 0034, the last letters of the registration. Uh, the full registration is 60-0034. We have the eight power plants on here, as you can see there on the wings, and then we have little Air Force insignia there. Um, 0034 there on the tail, which I believe would be the full registration. Yeah, you can, yeah, you can see it right there. So 60-034, um, it should be 00, but I think they exclude that second zero, probably for redundancy reasons or something like that. And then there's some extra details on the wings. So you can see right there, those I assume are the various flaps, slats, and ailerons. And then some extra details here on the horizontal stabilizers as well. Here's the landing gear underneath, very unique on the B-52 just because of how slim this is. And uh, yeah, you know, when you see it like this, it looks very menacing. So yeah, it can definitely scare people, but 
As Americans, I think this doesn't scare us. In fact, this really amuses us. So these wheels do roll. All of them actually do roll, which is quite amazing. And then these I don't think do. So yeah, I would assume because the, the fuselage is so thin and the wings go out so far, it does need the extra set of wheels over here to kind of support it so it doesn't, so the wings don't touch the ground and bad things happen. So I'm gonna go ahead and switch out camera batteries here because I'm concerned that the camera's gonna die on me and I'm not gonna have any footage to edit. So I'll be right back with a new camera battery. All right, I have returned with a new-ish camera battery, or at least one that has a decent enough amount of charge for me to continue the unboxing. So now we moved on to the big boxes. You can see one of them back there, and yes, it does have a special sticker on it. More on that in a moment. So let's go ahead and do the Northwest 747-400 with the special world plane livery. This is going to be my oldest Gemini Jets model and my oldest model overall in my collection. So flip it open, there is the model inside. Very, very beautiful. Um, seen some better days too as the box is torn up. And this is upside down, so I'm not sure if that was a printing error that was done perhaps on uh, this exact box, or this is something that they usually did back in the day. So this is a 1998 release, about 1999, uh, one of those two years. So this aircraft would have been about nine years old, eight, nine years old at the time that this model was re released. Now I believe it has since been retired. So uh, item number on this one is GJNWA006. So I believe this would have been the fifth Gemini Jets model ever made. So this is an old beauty. Here we go. Take this out of its 20, nearly 25-year-old plastic, which has definitely withstood the test of time, but has the model itself done the same. Ooh-hoo. Damn. This is amazing. Just to have such an old model in the collection, it is just insane. But this is the Northwest 747-400 with the World Plane livery. So a lot of various details on this model. Not gonna go over every single one. I'll just try to summarize it. So there's the cockpit windows. Looks like an escape hatch up there. Uh, 50 years, a little sticker up there. I'll just zoom in on each one rather. So 50 years of bridging the Pacific. So that's what Northwest did quite a lot. and. Delta still carries on that trend, even if it's not fully out of Minneapolis. So there's Manila, uh, Singapore, uh, Baghdad, and Hong Kong on this side. There's also some other stuff. Looks like I saw New York on there, uh, Seattle, and there's a couple others down there. I can't entirely see what they are, but there's a registration, 670 Uniform Sierra. Let's see the other side, if it has some different ones, and it looks like it does. Uh, so we got Honolulu right there. We have... Uh, Jakarta, uh, Beijing, and Tokyo. We also got some more cities right there. Looks like you got MSP back there as well, and some other cities as well. World playing titles along the tail, and then also because it's such an old model, we've got a tail seam on this one. So yeah, man, this is an old beauty. And of course, we got the back, a very old Gemini Jets logo, and the landing gear on this one do move. So that's kind of cool. So yeah. Just kind of a quick review on that one and we'll move on to the next one. All right, next up we have the KLM 777-300ER with the 100th anniversary sticker and the orange pride livery. This is the second of three surprise models that I requested. Um, again, I did not pick these models. These are just randomly picked out, so. Flip this open, we have the model inside and then there's the pamphlet there, all the aircraft information, all that fun stuff. On the back, uh, 2020 release. I believe this was released in early 2021. I think this is the January releases, if I remember correctly. So, item number on this one, GJKLM1905. Big boy again. This is on an old mold, so kind of pointless to do this, especially since they did this a few years ago without the 100th anniversary sticker. This is probably the only reason why they did it, but yeah, looks good. Orange is really, really bright. Holy crap, looks like it's been bleached. And here it is, the KLM 777-300ER with the Orange Pride livery and the 100th anniversary sticker. So start off at the front, we have the cockpit windows, got the L1 door, KLM Royal Dutch Airlines titles, and then we have that beautiful swoop there, um, which is present on their normal livery aircraft in this case here, since it's orange, um, well, obviously it's orange. 
Um, and I got the 100th anniversary sticker right there. There's the transition from orange to their standard uh, Royal Dutch Blue. I like that as I like to call it. This thing we got some uh, residue of some kind right here, uh, just kind of like on the Delta A330s, so that looks a little odd, but um, yeah. So then there's the Wi-Fi dome up there, and then it's the various antenna, registration, Papa Hotel, Dash Bravo, Victor Alpha, KLM logos on the engines, and then there is the underneath cradle mold, unfortunately, so it doesn't look as good as uh, the newer JC Wings mold. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it there, and then there's the KLM tail, of course. We all know and love that. But yeah, the orange is really, really bright. It's almost like a neon orange to my eyes. The camera makes it look a little darker, but it is still very, very bright. Not sure that's how it's supposed to be, but it is really bright either way. Now move on to the final model of this unboxing. And here it is. The final model of this unboxing is the Kalita Air 747-400 freighter flaps down configuration. Yes, this is one of the surprise models I ended up getting, a flaps-down configured uh, Kalita Air 747-400. I've always wanted a flaps-down model for so long, and finally I am going to have one in my collection. This is the Mass Cliffery, by the way, I should mention. So, aircraft pamphlet, you know the drill. And there goes the cardboard there. On the back, uh, 2021 releases, I believe it was in the February releases, if I remember correctly. Item number is GJCKS. 1999F, and since it's a flaps down, it has that F there at the end. Check this beauty out. Beautiful flaps down. First for the collection. Now the only other one I'll need is Interactive Series, and we will be good to go. Oh man, this is heavy. <laughs> wow, that is so cool. Jeez, they did an incredible job with this. Wow. Yes, finally, flaps down in the collection. Not even something that I gotta get, so yes. So we got the mask up here, starting up at the front. We got the mask, of course, and then we have the cockpit windows. Uh, there's your, one of the boarding doors right there. There's another one up here. Um, I believe this is a Boeing converted freighter as it does have the bigger hump, like on the passenger 744s. Registration, funnily enough, is 744 Kilo Charlie. Got the Kalita Air titles and the big brown stripe that goes all the way around the back. And we do have a little bit of a decal right down here. Uh, looks like that's, um, it looks like a captain, so possibly a pilot that has flown this aircraft of some kind. So if it is that person that is watching this video, then hi. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I got the blue mask, of course, up at the front. So obviously something that we have been very accustomed to for the last couple of years and all that fun stuff. But what we are more interested in is the flaps down. So there's the slats there, and then there's, of course, the flaps, the triple sl slotted flaps here on the 747s. God, this is so cool. So yeah, they had to custom make a wing mold for this because, well, yeah. Ooh, this one looks a little bit off. There's a bit of a gap in here, whereas this one looks fine. But uh, yeah, so if you were to look, on, look at this head on or perhaps Something like this there. Ooh, I'm about to drop the model there. That's why my hands are shaking there violently. Yeah, so it looks something like that as it was landing or if it was taking off even. Um, mostly when it's landing, this is how you would usually see it, not like how Gemini usually poses it as. But yeah, that's all the models, all 17 of them. We have finally made it to the end of the unboxing, but we still got a couple more things to unbox. And I'm going to start off with some NASCAR diecast. I did ask a few people to see if they wanted to see some NASCAR diecasts in this unboxing. They were all very interested, so if you did want to see just a NASCAR diecast, then welcome NASCAR fans. So yeah, um, start off with the 164 stuff. So our first one up that we have here is Christopher Bell's uh, number 20 Toyota Camry, the Ream paint scheme. We actually have one of their ones. Um, yeah, 2021 Camry. It's also the special diecast body and chassis. It's got some rubber wheels on it, so... Um, pretty cool. These are a little bit more expensive. These are like 15 bucks or something compared to like the 9 or 10 bucks for the regular stuff. Uh, yeah, I'm going to tear the box here on this one. So this is... Normally you're not supposed to open these, but I'd like to open them because, yeah, that's what we do. Yeah, it's got like a flap back here and all that fun stuff. And I'm just kind of pulling it out like that. And there we go. Take it out. Ooh, yeah. This does have some weight to it. And... Yeah, I'll do a traditional review on this like I do with my model airplanes because that's what we do around here. So 
So start off at the front, we have the Toyota Camry nose, and they got a little Joe Gibbs Racing logo down there. This is their 30th season for 2021. Got the new 2021 um, window windshield banner up here with the driver's last name, and then of course their manufacturer that they drive for, which is in this case is Toyota. Got the big number 20 up there at the top, and then there's the Ream logo back there. Nice uh, red and black design on this. Then here's the back. I uh, got the Camry, Ream.com, and Toyota. And then this side's about the same. Got interstate batteries and RUD here on the side. Wheels are rubber, as expected, and does look really nice under here, and this is on the EL mold, as expected. I've watched a few NASCAR diecast videos, so I have at least have some knowledge on this. Uh, looks like a little text under there. I can't exactly read that, but if I do put it under light, it looks just fine. And yeah, black interior and everything, so pretty standard stuff. It's got the smaller spoiler, so this would be used on like the uh, short tracks and road courses for 750 horsepower. So I'll put that off to the side here. I'll just kind of leave the boxy, the box stuff out and I'll just move on to this one right here. Denny Hamlin's 2021 uh, FedEx Express Toyota Camry. So standard stuff as expected with this one. So again, we'll unbox this here. Oh God, yeah, they packed this tight. Well, I ripped the thing. Oh well, it's fine. All right, so there is Denny Hamlin's paint scheme right here. Wish he would have won the title this year. He looked really good as a contender right up with Kyle Larson. So yeah, I don't have one of his die casts, unfortunately, um, at least one of his 2021 stuff. So you got the Toyota Camry nose right there. There's the FedEx uh, logo up there and they did modify for the 2021 season. They changed the font of the Express and the ground and the freight and all that fun stuff, but they don't have the colors anymore. I wish they kept the colors and said so just this standard orange stuff. And my washer is running at about full speed, so please disregard that noise as best as possible. So there's uh, Denny Hamlin up there um, on the window banner there, windshield banner number 11, FedEx Express. Got the FedEx logo back over there again, Sport Clips haircuts, um, some other logos down there as well. And yeah, so there's the back there as well. I also got the little um, rear view camera on there as well, which I like to print on the Camrys, but not the other cars for some reason. And then you got FedEx.com slash deliver and the Toyota logo underneath. As the underneath of the car, I got the black splitter and then a white spoiler. So again, 750 horsepower package is where you would see that kind of stuff. And our last one, 64 die cast. Again, I'm kind of going quick, I know. I just kind of want to put this in here because yeah, this will lengthen the unboxing. This is actually his 2020 Darlington throwback paint scheme with the Federal Express, the very old livery. I need to find a model of that. I need to find like a 737 or an MD-11 of some kind with that livery. So yeah, this is not the um, die cast chassis. This is just the standard Lionel stuff. And ooh, it does kind of have like a matte finish to it. Feels very matty. Um, so yeah, it's got the old uh, playoff banner there that they had for the 2020 season and the um, kind of like that blue teal um, spoiler there on the back. Um, no splitter um, that's not painted in that color as well. But yeah, the Federal Express livery on this number 11 car is really nice. Kind of a nice throwback as well to um, one of the old number 11 drivers. Actually, I think the number 11 is the winningest number in NASCAR ever. So that's kind of cool. Um, obviously across multiple drivers, so. Yeah, I uh, got the Cup Series Playoffs logo right there. You can kind of see that right there. And this is for the round of 16. So this is at the Darlington race, the first race of the playoffs for 2020. And that was also this year as well. Hamlin won uh, this year's Darlington playoff race in spectacular fashion, competing with Kyle Larson. So that was kind of cool. I uh, got the rear view camera back there. And then there's Hamlin's uh, last name there on that window banner. And obviously all the wins that he got last year. Look at that. Six playoff, or not playoff, uh, just six wins. There's obviously the old Goodyear uh, tires as well. Yeah, six wins up to this point. He did get one more as well. Um, probably not everybody's favorite, unfortunately, but I had to get it. And I have it in this big box. So grabbing it here. Yes, it is his uh, Fall Talladega 2020 win, and I know everybody's going to have a fit about this, but I figured I would get this anyway, so... Um, if you don't like it, then I just say click off the video now. But if you want to stick around, see the unboxing. Yeah. So you see the NASCAR Cup Series logo up there, and then also the race version sticker. It's got some kind of a foam back here. I've never opened up one of these, so if I look like an idiot trying to unbox this, then yeah, that's why. That's 
try and move the car around quite a bit, but I think we can forget that. So get that, get rid of that here, real quick. And yeah, get this out here out of the. Oh yes, look at that. That is so cool. You just got the car in there, and looks like some plastic there, protective uh, wrap right there. Uh, standard finish, nothing too special. I would have gotten a more cooler finish, but those are way more expensive. This is already like 60 bucks to begin with, so. Yeah, I think we can just open up from either side. I'll try and see, actually no, I can't open it from the front, so I'll just open it from the back. There was a 2020 schedule, by the way, so yeah. Lionel takes forever to get these in, so. Yeah, I think we just pull it out like that. Oh boy. Oh, we got a sticker right here too. Yeah, they always include these, I think, with all the 124 race wins. All right. Ooh. Man. Yeah, so it is on a stand. I believe it is uh, screwed down. Oh my God. Whoa. Okay, so the, the roof flaps do come up. That's kind of cool. Now this one's about to fall off though. That's kind of unfortunate. I think the foot opens up as well. Yeah, it does. So yeah, so I got all the basically all the details and everything from the race win, including the special um, spoiler that they had on the super speedways. They kind of modified it for the uh, 2021 Summer Daytona and Fall Talladega races because after they had to slow down the cars because Joey Logano had a pretty bad crash at the Spring Talladega race in 2021. So there's the back. Um, got a nice detail there, obviously with the rear view camera and all that fun stuff. FedEx.com slash deliver. And God, look at the sides of these things. Yeah, this got scuffed up here. Yeah, so definitely had seen a couple of things there. And there's a sticker there. Um, I think that was for somebody that had recently passed when the race was run. So there's the FedEx Express titles and there is the rubber right there, the tire, the rear tire right there. And this ran through some speedy drives. That's why it looks like this. Um, I did remember seeing the speedy drive getting kicked up there in the last lap as Hamlin made that very uh, controversial move, so. Yeah, and there's the sides right there, and then there's obviously the window net. I think this does come out. Uh, yeah, and I think these do move as well, so. Again, I will have to take this out the screw here, but I think for now, I'll just leave this on the base because I don't want to get this all dinged up here as soon as I take this out, so. Yeah, this is actually really cool, not gonna lie. And then there's more of the speedy dry and stuff. No confetti or anything really on it, so, yeah. Didn't get really scuffed up or anything. He was actually, he was actually started on the pole for the race. It didn't have qualifying, so they, he started on the pole and then he moved to the back at some point early on in the race because they were getting all aggressive and racy. He didn't want to get caught himself up in a wreck. So he ran in the back for most of the race and eventually they all started wrecking. Um, looks like I just found another thing on here. Uh, virtual garage stuff. I don't really care about that. So he sat in the back for a while, and as they started wrecking, he moved his way up to the front, avoided all the big crashes, and was able to put himself in contention for the win. And of course, they had to boot the race off of um, cable network that was on NBC, and then they moved it over to NBCSN for the final lap. So of course, people got upset about that, and it also didn't help when Hamlin won in the way that he did by going below the double yellow line and advancing his position. But whatever NASCAR says is what goes, unfortunately, so yeah. And that'll do it for this unboxing. 17 models, several NASCAR diecasts of all kinds. Yeah, this is a whole jam-packed unboxing, so thank you guys for sticking around if you were able to sit through the whole video, but if you did watch several parts, that's also fine. I do thank you for your time if you did watch this video. And yeah, 2021's been a great year, so this is a great way to round it out. Fun NASCAR diecast, a lot of airplane models, 17 of them in total. By the way, I'm mostly known for my airplane stuff if you're a NASCAR fan that came over just to see the diecast. But uh, yeah, that will do it for me for this video. So again, with that being said, that is the end of a very, very long unboxing video. I thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in 2022, hopefully with some more great content to come. And for what it's worth, I got a Denny Hamlin hat, uh, various socks, a few clothes, and some pretty cool NASCAR pictures. So yeah, there's just kind of a quick overview of all that stuff. So yeah, that's pretty much everything then. So yeah, really excited.